sure that they have a good first week's experience of yoga. So if you have anybody in mind, the way to sign them up is to just use this QR code right in the center square. And then of course, we're going to Himalayan Institute December 1st through 4th. So if you're interested, I'll be the teacher. Would love to have you with me. If you have questions, I can answer those after class. Let's get going. Let's get into our child's pose. Toes together, knees open, arms forward, and bring your forehead down to your mat. And then ease your hips back toward your heels. Stretch your arms long. Once you get settled into this space, take your deep breath in and exhale. Now see if you can notice this as you're breathing, that what happens as you're taking deep breaths is it has this quality also of stimulating other parts of your body, nerves, muscles, organs. See if you could appreciate that quality for these few breaths and that important work of the activity of your breathing. So you feel how your diaphragm descends and sucks air down into your lungs and then softens and relaxes up to its place of rest under your rib cage. On your next inhale, lift your body up into downward facing dog. Body like the upside down letter V. Get your hands and your feet set up on the floor for your practice. So set them wide. And then as you're breathing here, let them just sort of sink down into your mat. You'll then feel especially the knuckle of your big toe and the thumb side of your palm. Keep breathing and looking for that sensation of your big toe sinking down and the thumb side of your hand sinking down. A little easier to feel when you have your feet really set wide. And then once you feel like they've done some of that sinking as if you're standing by the edge of the ocean and the water's passing back and forth over your hands and feet, that sinking feeling, also give it a quality of squeezing the sand in between your hands and feet together. Notice what that does when you take the sinking and add the in squeezing, the squeezing toward your center line, how that changes, how stable you may feel, and how you might notice it locks you right into your center line of strength. Keep that sensation, look forward, and step to the front of your mat. When you get to the front, feet parallel and hip width distance, lift up halfway, and then hang down. Keep your breath flowing. Sway from side to side and turn up the volume of your inner listening to your body. Listen for how it is today. I usually find if it's a morning practice for me, I find areas in my rib cage that feel a little tighter from the way that I slept before. And so the breathing and the hanging here in the beginning just starts to soften and warm those areas. Then come to the center. Really let your feet sink down and hug in. You might even lift your 10 toes in the air to put emphasis on that sensation. With one more breath, press your feet down and come rolling up to standing. Take your time, stack your body. Once you can, unroll your shoulders, lift your gaze, sweep your arms, and then hands into prayer position and just pause. Settle into the intention for your practice that can serve as a North Star as you move from pose to pose, telling you how to shape and refine every pose. So consider it that way. I'm going to set this intention that's going to influence how I shape and refine every pose. So I'm curious. I'm present. I'm willing is another one. And then let's take these three chants together. Breathe in. Um. One more time. Um, inhale, reach up. Fold to the floor as you exhale. Inhale, lift halfway and just pause right here and breathe. High hands on your thighs. 
Get the sense of the feet sinking and hugging. You're going to need that through the whole sun salutation. You'll feel your hips start to light up, become a little warmer as the muscles start to work. And you'll also feel the pit of your belly lift. Now set your gaze on one spot a little forward. Take another breath and then step back to the high plank. Pause. Feet and hands sink down into the ground and hug in. You could put your knees on the ground. Keep that much action as you look forward and lower all the way down to your belly on the mat, shoulders back. Inhale, upward facing dog until you feel the muscles of the front of your belly stretching. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe. Now what you have here is a chance to keep sinking and hugging your feet. Two more breaths. Sink on your exhale and hug. One more time, inhale. Get that sinking and hugging as you bend your knees and jump with the sinking and hugging present. Halfway lift, forward fold. Inhale, stand. Lift as high as you can and go back. Fold to the floor as you exhale. Lift halfway, low plank on the exhale. Upward facing dog, breathe in. Downward facing dog, breathe out. Three breaths, fill up and empty out. Keep on breathing and sinking and hugging your feet. Now keep that feeling. Here's the last breath. Exhale, sink, hug, bend your knees and hop. Keep the hug. Halfway lift, forward fold. Keep the hug, stand up. Keep hugging and hugging and have that be the force that stands you up. Fold to the floor. Halfway lift, low plank. If you keep the hug, you'll float. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Breathe here. So what we're doing is we're lighting up the center line strength. Or if you were here Tuesday, it's the muscles of your deep front line. One more time, breathe in. When you exhale, bend your knees and jump. Halfway lift, forward fold. One more time, stand up. Feet sinking and hugging as you reach fold to the floor. Halfway lift, low plank. You can drop back if that's available. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Three breaths here. Breathe in. Now squeeze your fingertips to the mat as you breathe out. One more time. Focus on your hands, sinking and hugging. Bend your knees, look forward, step or jump to the front of your mat. Halfway lift, forward fold hands on your hips take chair pose sit way back lift your 10 toes into the air keep on breathing while you're pulling your hips back pull the pit of your belly up into your body now cross your forearms place your palms inside of your knees and press out as you breathe here knuckle of your big toe really emphasize it into the ground as you wake up the whole inner line of your legs once you feel like you've got a fire in those muscles, inhale and reach your arms up, lift up, look up, fold to the floor. Halfway lift, low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward and lunge for warrior one. Back foot flat, we're gonna stay here for a second. Use the hand of the leg that's forward, the back of it, to hug the inside of your thigh. The other arm can reach up. As you're hugging, what we're doing is lighting up the inner thigh. Most of you will take this pose pushing out and open. That's a default setup of your muscles to hold the pose. Pull back and hug in. And then light up your back leg as if there was a hand pressing on that thigh as well until you feel the whole inseam on fire. Take another breath. Good work. Hands to the floor. Chaturanga. I can see that work. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Now the left side, step forward, left arm down, palm facing out, back of the hand in. And you keep thinking of this inseam hugging in while the outer seam drags out from your hip out. You've got it. Really great lineup for all the thigh strength that I can see here in the room. Feel free to reach up for the last breath if you'd like. Then hands to the floor for chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. That's it, breathe in 
and breathe out. Two more, inhale and exhale. Here's the last one, deep breath in. Exhale, bend your knees and jump. Halfway lift, four, hold. Take chair, sit and reach, fold for the floor. Keep working the tools now, halfway lift, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, right foot forward, lunge. See if you can keep the sensation you know you created without giving the, the feedback or do it if it's best for you, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, left side, step forward, lunge, the usual way or the integrated way. Hands to the floor, chaturanga. That's it, Ali. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Breathe. Now feel how it is in your body from the work that you're doing. Gives two more breaths. When you're focused on these deep core muscles, it'll build heat faster. Last breath. Exhale, bend your knees and jump. Halfway lift, forward fold. Everything working now. Chair pose from your inner ankle up to your groin. Fold. Halfway lift, still feel the lift up your inseam, chaturanga. Feel the stretch down your inseam. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, right foot forward, lunge, lift, lift the pit of your belly, hands down, chaturanga, empty. Up dog, down dog, left side, step. Inhale, lift and reach, hands down, chaturanga, empty. Up dog, downward facing dog, breathe here. It's something else to turn on a new way of your body working. Takes a little time setting it and holding it, then practice keeping it while you're transitioning. One more breath, exhale, bend your knees, let's jump. Let's just do one more round. Halfway lift, forward fold. Chair pose, sit back and reach, fold to the floor. Halfway lift, low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, right foot forward and lunge, warrior one, lift, hands to the floor, chaturanga. Take your time, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, left foot step from your feet to your arches all the way up to the groin, you have the lift, hands down, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog and breathe. Now raise your right leg up into the air. Bend your knee, heel to your hip, open your hips up. The space we've been working, now stretching. See if you can breathe and experience the relieving of the work up your lifted legs, inner thigh. Can you feel the stretch from your groin up the inseam of your thigh to your inside knee? <clears throat> Take another breath and flip the pose over two feet to the floor. Anchor your feet, reach up and overhead. Now, even here, create the sensation of your feet sinking down into the sand and hugging in. Sinking down and hugging in. One more breath, side plank, right hand to the mat, face the long left side of your mat, stack your body up. <clears throat> now, if you have all of this connected, you could inhale, lift the top leg, Exhale, hug it back down to the bottom leg. Inhale, lift the top leg and exhale, hug it. Yeah, like you're stretching open a rubber band and bringing it back together. One more breath, high plank to low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Left leg into the air, stretch it up so your whole leg feels long on all sides. Then bend your knee and turn your hip open all the way up through your inner thigh to your inner knee here. <clears throat> if you can't quite feel it or find it, press your left hand deeper into the sand. As you're ready, flip the pose over. Keep your breath flowing and sink your feet deep into the ground beneath you. Steady breathing. Hug in from the ankles to the knees to the groin. Breathe, one more breath, high plank to low. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. 
Step your right leg forward to crescent lunge. What I miss, the side plank. Go to the downward facing dog and come out to your high plank and go to your side plank. Face the right side of the room. It's just focusing on making sure you get this sensation in each pose. So ready with your legs. Inhale, lift the top. Exhale, hug it down. Two more. Inhale, lift the top. Exhale, hug it down. Isn't that crazy, the strength? High plank to low. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Why care about this kind of strength? Because it's one of the things that changes something like lower back pain, for example. Right foot forward, crescent lunge. Once you get yourself in the crescent lunge, it's first just bring your hands to your hips and lift your torso up tall. Then the inside of your right hand, inside of your knee, and you'll hug and pull back. Left hand can just be on the back of your left hip, just guiding it forward, wrapping it around and guiding it forward until you feel like your legs are scissors that are about to close. Create that much action and tension. That alone will build new heat. Once you have that, you'll then need to really lift the pit of your belly to your best ability. Then stretch your arms up high as you can. Keep the pit of the belly, reach up and go back. Yep, reach up and go back. Lunge a little deeper in your front leg if you can. One more breath, hands to prayer position, press. Stretch long and twist, left elbow to your right knee. Good, keep breathing here. Before any real twisting focus happens, heel, reach it back, long neck, long spine. Reach forward with the front of your body, the crown of your head, your chest. Then as you're breathing, keep stretching extra length in your left side body. Couple more breaths. Here's the last one. Inhale and get really long. Exhale and twist. That made a difference. Reach up to crescent lunge. Open to warrior two. So keep some level of focus as you set this up rather than just kind of doing the full unfocus, refocus. Settle into your feet. When you reach your arms out, be prepared to use the back of your front arm in a second. Tilt and use the back of your front arm against the inseam of your thigh, inner knee, bottom of your, your leg to just hug against your arm. And if you feel like your inseam's pressing out and then your belly's hanging, hug the inseam back. You can even trace your arm across the inseam toward the groin to just keep hugging back. Then press your back foot and reach your arm overhead and breathe. You got it. Get the sensation of the inner thigh line reaching. One more breath, high plank to low. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Take your left foot forward for crescent lunge. You got a hand on the right hip, a soft assist on the inner thigh, and just start working your legs in a way that maybe you haven't done before. What will happen in your back foot is instead of being in the big toe, you'll be on all five toes. Come up a little buoyant, up out of your hips, especially if you've got that extra flexibility in your hip. You might just be a touch too long there. That might be what's causing you to hang down a little, so low. Now lift the pit of your belly, whatever it takes to get the whole of your torso, like a slinky, your spine like a slinky lifting. Then take your arms up and overhead. Keep stretching up. Keep lifting in the pit of your belly and stretching up. As you keep the belly in, you can go up and go back. Deep lunge, keep working the pit of the belly in and up. Yeah, feel how it changed your pelvis? Now take another breath, a deep lunge, keep just this low belly, reach up and back, hands to prayer, get ready for twisting, really good. Right elbow to your left knee, stretch long and twist. Nice, good. Your left hip, draw it back, stretch this side long, Janet from hip crease to armpit long. So chest to the front of your mat, from the back rows of the studio toward the street. Another breath or two. One more, stay and twist now, crescent lunge, warrior two. It makes a difference, doesn't it? Just a tiny little extra, deep lunge. 
we've had two days this week to really set this into place. You'll then keep some amount. It won't be like this every time, but you'll keep some amount and you'll notice other poses changing. Sink low into your warrior to, to lunge. Do that by just dragging back the outside of the knee, but keeping the pit of your belly. Good, tilt for extended side angle. Now, if the tilting has turned into a relaxing into your front leg, that's not quite what we were looking for. Liven it all up by lifting the pit of your belly. There you go, Aaron, really good. I know it. <laughs> Sue, this has turned out just a little further than your knee. There you go. One more breath, high plank to low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, stretch out. You can pedal your knees back and forth, pull one hip back more, another hip back more. Imagine what you're doing is you're just pulling some space from your hips up to your rib cage, up to your armpits. Now, walk halfway up your mat. Keep your feet together. We're gonna use these skills you've been building. Inhale, bend your knees. Exhale, lean into your fingertips. Try that again. Inhale, bend your knees, and exhale, lean as far as you can. You could have your hands on two flat blocks as you work to shift your weight into your palms. If you're ready to take little hops, feel free to do that. You might like them like that. Little hops where you're really squeezing your feet together and revealing that um, center line. One more breath, hop up to the front of your mat, forward fold and hang. Hang right here. Chair poses next. Feet sink and hug in, squat back, sit in the chair pose. You got it. Pull the pit of your belly up and in. Hands to prayer position and twist. You got it. Breathe in and stretch your body long. Exhale and twist. Body long. Exhale and twist. One more time, twist on the exhale, reach up to chair, forward fold. Hook your big toes with your middle and index fingers and hang down. Chair twist the other way, sit back, hands to prayer, and turn. Good, you got it. Twist. Give you guys a selection of sizes here. I've got even there. Is this your personal block? Okay. Two more breaths. One more breath. Chair pose and forward fold, gorilla pose. We're gonna do something in a moment where you're all gonna use your two blocks. Ideally, you have two pretty matched size blocks. So I've tried my best with what we have to get that around the room. While you're hanging here, grab your blocks. Put your blocks behind you, just like right behind you. Something like this. So if I had a second one, I'd put it here. You have developed all this hugging strength over these last couple of days together. Open your feet. Oh, let's do this first. Got a squat. Just squat down. Elbows inside of your knees. Take the prayer pose. All this strength we've been working here, let's give it some stretch. There you go, Charlie. I didn't want to just take Sue's block. But you can shift your weight from one leg. I find when I shift it, I get extra stretching here and then switch it into the other and get the extra stretching here. So your blocks, set them up behind you evenly. So if I had a second one, I would sit it right here evenly. And then feet outside of your blocks. This is your crow pose for today, a little different. Bring your hands behind and sit them on your block, or hold them on your block. So you'll find like where they need to sit and shift. 
And then you're going to lean into your blocks. So my hands will be on my blocks. And I'm just going to see if I can put some pressure in my hands. Point your fingers forward, not back. So spin them around. So you'll be under your legs like this. Bend elbows, so your chaturanga elbows, and you want them pretty wide. And see if you can tilt onto the block with your hands and see if your feet will pick up. So if I'm just going to go with my elbows under my thighs, sit back, and just see if I can pick my feet up. Just see if they'll come up off the floor. Just off the floor. So the feet stay back, or the feet stay in front of you. You're a little higher with your hands than I am. It's going to be awkward for you at first. It'll take some playing with. You'll be able to find this, Allie. Yeah, take your hands a touch wider. Yeah. And then that the chaturanga shelf you build with your arms, you sit into it. So, Charlie, your blocks probably just need to be behind you a tiny bit more, though it's very awkward. You got it. Yes, you got it. If Once you get there, if you can, you can bring your feet across in front of you and hook them, and you'll use your inner thighs. Now, I think awkward's getting you because I know some of you definitely have the capability to do this, but it's, yep, Sue, sit. Yes. See if you can get your feet to just hook on each other and hold them. You got it. Okay, one more try, and then we'll go to the forward fold. It's so weird, right? A little bit of success. Forward fold and hang. Hang. You can move your blocks out to the sides. Come rolling up to standing. Sweep your arms overhead. We'll take the right side. Eagle pose. Right arm under. Squat. Right leg over. As we develop skills, that's how we develop these poses that are on crazy pictures on Instagram. We're always working the baseline of a lot of those really fancy poses. And though putting a few of the baseline skills together, well, you can do one alone or the other alone, but all together, that can sometimes be a lot. Step out and switch to the other side. Left arm under, left leg over. Use the squeezing of your form, squeezing of your legs to get some stretching across your shoulders and the back of your pelvis. Sit down, like hips sit back a little bit more. Yeah, it's almost like overcorrected for the leaning forward. There. Step out. Right side, right arm under, right leg over. Squat back. Wrap around. There you go. Little more pit of the belly. Yep, keep drawing it in to lengthen your lower back. Good. One more breath here. Sit deep and then step out. Left side, left arm under, left leg over. The same legs that we've used in a lot of the lunges apply here. Sink deep into the crease of your left hip. That is a crazy one, isn't it? Now use the pit of your belly instead. Keep on breathing. So what's kicked in now is your lower back doing it. More belly if you can. Keep hugging it in. Just try it right there. Yep. More pit of your belly now, Aaron. From right here. Yep. Stack your shoulders on your wrist. Hug your legs. Very good. Step out. Reach. I know it's fire in the leg. Hug your right knee into your chest. Use either your hand or a strap around your foot so you can extend your knee and stand tall. So again, not leaning back and pushing into your hand or the strap. Stand tall. This leg doesn't have to totally straighten. We're looking for an opening in the whole back of your right side body here. There are a lot of other obvious spots that you're working with, but I bet if you put your attention on it, you can feel your right side back opening. Oh, you have one. Anybody else? Would you like a strap? Okay. Open your leg to the right. Look and reach to the left. That's it. Keep letting your right hip crease deepen and deepen. Yes. Like from your inside ankle, your inseam to your groin, there's a drawing in right now. Yes, Janet. Come forward. Hug your knee into your chest. You can drop the strap. Open up to airplane pose. Now, how would this work in this pose? Imagine your standing foot is sinking into the sand. Sinking and hugging in, and the only way that'll work 
is if the same hugging is at the back leg. So the sinking of the back foot is into the wall behind you and hug in with your inner thigh to your center line. That's awesome. I can feel that. Keep working with it. Hands to prayer. The wiggling comes with the strength going in and out. Half moon. Really good. It's always so much fun to me to see your bodies get things. I know that they'll be stronger, more stable. They'll feel better. You'll breathe more deeply. Yeah, still sink and hug. I saw you working with that. How does it work on the top leg? Just imagine that your top leg, you're hugging in on the shin as well. Hug in. I see Ali. She's creating her own self-assist on the standing leg. Now, while you're here, hit of your belly into your body. Stay with it and up to your chin. See if you can get the opening in your low back that comes next. A little softness in your standing knee. Yes, belly in now. Forward fold and hang. Sway from side to side. So getting to stay a little longer in a pose, you'll discover something else. The resisting parts of your body that were over strong, they're just going to fatigue and give up, and it'll give you a chance to find new things. When they fatigue and give up, your balance starts to sway a little bit. Grab the strap and let's stand up and do the other side. Hug your left knee into your chest. Left knee into your chest. There you go. Extend. So here you got it. Imagine standing foot, standing knee. Keep it there. Hug. You've got a pretty good center line going. See if you can hug and make that happen. Sink that hip crease. You might need to soften your knee to get it. Yep. Feel the difference. <laughs> Open to the left. Look and reach to the right. Breathe. Hip crease sink. Yep, that's it, Charlie. Come forward, hug your knee into your chest. Get squared up and move into your airplane pose. Already open your chest. Good. Sink your standing foot down. You got it, Suzanne. A little overly compensating now. Sink your standing foot down. Hug just gently. It's a standing leg. It's got to do a little more of its work. These two points hug. Hug them. A little more hug, and they'll be able to hang off of your legs. Hands to prayer. Half moon. Right arm down, left arm up. Keep the hugging action of your legs. You got it right here, Sue. Hug down with your top leg. Right into my palm. Your standing leg. It's tricky to shift it like that. It's very tricky because what you used to rely on to hold it, your lower back cramping that you don't usually notice, but like later in the week, you're like, yeah, I'm old now. My back hurts a lot. Well, no, it doesn't. You just do your yoga weird <laughs> and your day. <laughs> so hug into the shins. Now, Aaron, pit of your belly in. I find letting go of something that's been gripping my whole life a little challenging. And though when you hug your shins, and lift the pit of your belly, all of a sudden, the front of your pelvis lifts to your face and your lower back opens. One more time with the pit of your belly. If you can, stay with it. Erin, you are just getting this, lady. Forward fold and hang. How'd that feel? It feels like, oh my God, she said. How's your back feeling, Jody? What are you noticing? Interesting. She's creeping on her outer. These muscles keep you standing upright. They get really weak and tight. And then we become old ladies and we can't stand upright. And these are part of the problem. There are stability. That's awesome. Good. I love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what she's also pointing out, you have this muscle that holds your leg bones onto your torso. So if you think of your femur as shaped kind of like this, this distorted, but you have a muscle that goes across and connects, it dives through your body and like a spray up your lumbar spine to the bottom of your thoracic spine. So the bottom of your thoracic is where your bottom rib is. You either can stretch this or this. So when you end up stretching, say in crescent lunge, and then you don't know why your ribs are doing this. It's because that muscle's tight. You can have it on one end or the other. So I'm stretching it here. I can't have it here. So I have to kind of shorten up by throwing it here. If I stay here and take my arms overhead, I'm maximum stretched at both ends of that muscle. Okay, that's enough rest. Nice. 
right arm back, hold your ankle from the inside, left arm in the air. We're just having a little workshop here today. So now we're on that muscle, funny enough. We worked it and now it's at play. So right now you've already challenged it by standing straight up and tall and taking your arm overhead. So knees together and just settle your ribs in and lift all this side body work we're doing is about this. Now you have that, keep it and stretch into the pose. Never sink into a back bend, stretch into the pose. When you're sinking into a back bend, like think about your camel pose, the sinking that happens, that's just because your psoas is so tight, but it's being so exposed in the front. You got it. Come on out and switch sides. You'll start to never see the poses again as you learn more and more what they're doing for your body. It's a lot of what we do in our access teacher training. And yet it's so much information. It takes years for it, I think, to settle. So then you use your yoga practice as a healing practice. And there's nothing weird or new agey about that. It just simply is that. You're moving through a pose, exposing a part of the body that's weak, tight, really unstable, and you're working with it, whatever it happens to be you're finding. So we as teachers know to hold you there, watch for the reactions you're doing, but you're actually the best teacher in the room for you. Come on out, feet on the floor. Settle in. Just give yourself like a blank slate moment to feel how it is. Yeah, I see all these actions. You're doing that because that muscle's like, wait, why are we at this? Let's do a second set. Right arm back, hold your ankle from the inside. Now, I told you how the muscle goes across the head of this femur bone. When you do this, you've just completely el eliminated that stretch. Now I'm not dealing with the psoas at the bottom at all, so I don't have to confront its tightness. When I come from here, I'm right on it. That's it. Keep pressing your foot, sinking your foot, because it'll give you the power to lift your belly. Really good. Keep working the actions, Charlie. I see you working with it. Come on out. Yeah, don't ever fall out of the pose because you just got bored and quit working in one part of your body. Fall out because you came to the point where you reached the edge. Try the other side. It's so much fun to work with you guys when I see you really working with your bodies like this. Look for it and learn from it. So for some of us, a little overly flexible and we're used to relying on our flexible. And then we, and I'm like that. We have a little challenge when we get into this of we're still just veering into tilting. How do we handle that? Soften the standing knee. For you, actually press out with your ankle. Find my hand with your ankle. Keep looking. Not by moving your whole body <laughs> by that. I know. It's a whole new world. Laura, I see you doing it. That's it. Good. Okay, come on out. Feet on the floor. Really good work. Sole of your right foot, left inner thigh. Either take your arms overhead this way or take the reverse prayer. Both of them in their own way are stretching the outside of your forearm and your wrist. Feeling like you just need to be settled, then just hands to prayer position. So the arm motions aren't just for fun. They all do a different thing. So if you're getting into your wheels and this is restricting your wheel, which is for a lot of us, then stretch it here. One of these two ways. If you're feeling unsettled, then settle by getting grounded and pressing your palms together. Some of us still feel tight in our psoas. That's why we take the side lean because it's some of the only ways to get into the side of that muscle and stretch it. Switch sides. So yes, we could call different arm variations just for fun and it looks good. You instinctually know, wait, something feels better for me in my body. Yep, pit of the belly, really nice. I see you guys making really intelligent changes in your bodies as you're holding the pose. Big toe, soften your knee and you'll have access. Yes, and I love that your foot's giving you the access to press against. Then the pose, is, the practice is infinitely interesting because you're in attention about something that matters to you, your health and body the whole way through. Good, step out, come to the front of your mats. Once you're there, inhale and sweep your arms overhead. Fold to the floor as you exhale. Halfway lift, chaturanga. Don't forget your sinking, scooping inner thigh line. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, right side triangle. You work and work and work to connect to the center line because it is not our default through the whole practice. Now you're getting a big pose to bring relief and stretching to it. 
Anchor your front foot's big toe down. Now wonder about this in your own body. Where is your front knee pointing right now? Is it locked? Because your knee right now is the secret little thief. It's stealing the effect of the pose from you. What do I mean by that crazy language? First of all, anchor your big toe. Get a sense of if your knee is falling into your arch. Yes, your thigh rotates out while your shin rotates into the big toe. Then sink up into the pelvis. Don't you lock that knee. <laughs> nice try, Aaron. Don't you lock that knee. And then we knew in every pose, the pit of the belly had to come in and lift up toward the face. Yeah, you feeling your left lower back stretch now, Aaron? Yep. And actually, it's deep in your psoas because I bet under my thumb, you're feeling something weird. <laughs> come on up. Yep. Face the long left side of your mat. Forward fold. We get to create a bit of a neutral here. Walk your fingertips forward so your fingers are like spider legs on the mat, creating an arced palm. Stretch them really far forward. And now pause for a second and sink your hand, fingertips of your, of your hands and your feet down into the sand. Hug them in. Once you have that action, settle the weight back into your heels and hips. So you have integration and then the length. Now you've exposed an opportunity. Figure out in your own body what feels like, wait, that's tight here. It's like it's over challenged. Breathe. Just breathe and see what the movement of your, the, this big muscle of your diaphragm in the action of breathing is doing to change how it is in your body. So interesting. Take one more breath. You are creating healing in yourself. Walk your hands in. Come on up to stand. Face the front of your mat. Standing single leg forward fold. We take the feet on skis. They don't ever come to the tightrope. Step long. I know sometimes you'll see and feel yourself wanting to step short, but you're going to miss the whole pose here. Step long and anchor your big toe. In fact, why don't you lift your 10 toes in the air? And then pull your right hip back as you hinge. You're all going to need a soft front knee to hinge. So it's never butt under you with this and a lot of strain in your lower back. It's butt back, chest forward. I want as much hips back, shoulders back, chest forward, neck long, head forward as I can get. The two places opposite. And then from the big toe to the sitting bone, those two places opposite. You should feel it up your leg. Are you all feeling it? So your legs are set. Don't change that. While you're set here, Bring your left hand to the inner thigh of your front leg. Reach back with your right hand. So you're just stretching long, and then you can start to tilt. Now, how can I prevent that you shift your weight? It's tricky to stop that from happening in all of you. Uh, let's just keep the hand on the hip and re reach. Your concentration is to keep pulling your left hip back, the left one. So I've changed the language on you here. Keep weight in your back leg, good. I can see that all around. Suzanne, a little over, over changing it now. Bring your weight more in your front leg. Just your whole weight. Yep. You've got it. So you feel this twisting triangle. Torso long. This longer. Yes. Yep. Whatever it takes to make this long. And stretch here too. Twist. Three more breaths. Stretch and twist. You got it. Side body long. Stretch and twist. You got one more, stretch and wring it out. Hands to the floor, downward dog. So you can see the twisting. We a lot of times think that's for just cranking it around. It's really for as long as you can be and adding a little more with a twist. Left side triangle, step forward. Take the whole sequence, so triangle first. You know that your shin bones rotate into your big toe. For a lot of us, that's now making our knee drop inward. You know your thigh bone way up here in the hip, it's rotating out. So there's some opposite going on on the top and bottom of your leg. Unlock the knee. Open your back foot a little longer if you can, Aaron. Yep. Big toe down. So this side down. Now look where your knee is. This side up. Yep, now pull your belly in. 
straighten your back leg. Pit of the belly right down here. That's the spot. It'll open your lower back. That pit of the belly in this pose is challenging because when we let it relax, it lets us out of the stretch a bit. Keep on breathing. Keep sinking the front hip crease deeply. Good. Come on up to standing. Hands behind you. Interlace them or hold a strap and inter uh, hold the bind and forward fold. Just double check your feet really quick. Yep. Good. They're parallel to the short sides of the mat. To manage the pose, you just keep your feet sinking and hugging. Those of you who are here on Tuesday know that there are some muscles, right? Like stripes right down there in the center of your butt in the back. They're doing a lot of the work here. Keep hugging your legs together. You can release the bind. Let your palms rest like they're in back pockets and feel some heat in that area under your palms as you come halfway up with soft knees. Do you feel those muscles working? Good. Strong belly. Let your feet sink down. Come on up. Belly lifts you. Nice. So you felt that the whole way, didn't you? Turn to face the front of your mat. Standing single leg forward fold. Go for it. You know enough stuff. You work with whatever's coming to mind right now. <clears throat> Keep your breath going. Standing single leg forward fold. Now, do we need to do every practice this so focused on a skill? No, because then you have the skill and you work with it. It's not a habit yet. It's not your default way of working being integrated in this way. So strength needs to be built. That'll take time. Do you need to worry about remembering any of this? No. Your body will remember what's needed. As you are in a pose and breathing and noticing what's going on and becoming curious, the tools will come right back to you. Twisting triangle, figure it out. Long. Yep, so Suzanne, instead of your hip going over to Sue, make it go straight back. Yes, your big toe is part of the, the challenge there. Yes, you feel the inseam now of your thigh. Yep, back. Yep, I can see some tightness is coming from the back leg. Even if you need to let that heel rise a bit, you can. If I could stretch your neck, stretch your spine, then you twist. Good, two more. You can do it. Stay with it. One more. Hands to the floor, downward facing dog. Good, you have something new in your body. Come to a high plank, lower down to your belly on the mat. We're taking a back bend. Feet turned under like they were in the push up if the floor is at my belly. And then not turned out and heels squeezing together. That'll make your butt squeeze. So more emphasis on the big toe knuckle. Interlace your hands. Press them back with your heels pressing back, with your tail pressing back, and lift the front of your body. Doesn't have to be high. Take the lifting all the way up through the sides of your neck to your temples and breathe. So I look around and see a lot of heels kind of knocking together. Anchor your toes. Press your heels back. Breathe. And we have the inside line. We've been working with it as though you're hugging. You hug, Jess. Can you find it? Yep, to hug. Yeah, the muscles that raised and lowered you, they're gently working. You hug. Come on down. Floor bow. We'll do one side at a time with your right arm. Reach back for your right foot. Keep your left toes turned under like they just were, like they would be if you were doing a push-up. Left arm can be folded in front of you or straight. Then kick back and up. You could, if you want, just reach real forward. If it works for you, you could turn your palm face in. Sometimes that helps me find my center line. See what works for you. And drive your big toe of your kicking foot up toward the ceiling. Keep breathing. Now, for those of you that had that over flexibility in the standing pose, move your ankle out. Just, yeah, out there. Light up that. That's okay. Fold like this and press. Yep, press into my shin. So you find your whole outside shin on fire. Yeah. Come on down. Wave your feet from side to side. Let's do the other side. Reach back with your left hand. Hold your left ankle from the outside. Right toes can turn under an anchor. And kick up. Yep, kick up. Keep hugging. A little easier on this side, huh? It's like that in a body. 
And though your whole body is trembling, you're like, new information, new body parts working here. How about a little more pit of the belly? Little more pit of the belly. There you go. This is the muscle. That guy is our, our part of our deep front line. It's like, wait, how? I don't know where. What is my job? Come on down. Wave your feet from side to side. Could any of you find that muscle for yourself? Let's do each side one more time. We can do fewer wheels because of it. The muscle that you did right here when your hands were in your back pocket and you folded and raised up and be your glute medius. Kick back, reach back. Kick back and kick up. Yeah, kick back and kick up. Press out into my palm, which is with your ankle. The knee goes in, yeah. Oh, there you go, Jody. Another breath. You're welcome. Come back down. You'll think about me all day. Switch sides. Let's do the other side. You'll have to have the resolve before you start. Once you get up there, you're kind of in all the usual stuff. Let this guy go. There. So it's firm, but this one's not clenching too. Come on down. Wave your feet. It is confusing because we just scree. Well, the thing is, what, it's a great question, Jody says. It's confusing for me and my butt. What, do I just squeeze it? Do I not squeeze it? What do I do? But there are a lot of different muscles there. And there are some that dominate and then some that don't really kick in and do their job. And the pose is asked for your body to differentiate. Okay, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. You can jump through and come down into your bridge pose. How are you feeling there, Charlie? <laughs> come up into your bridge. Let your feet sink down and hug them in. The first dog I had as an adult was a German short hair pointer and they're bird dogs. And then a friend of ours had had puppies. That's where we got it. He had a bird dog that he actually took out hunting. We've never done that. But why I'm telling you this is about this. Let your feet sink down and just hug the sand in with your arches. When a bird dog goes out into the field to retrieve the bird and bring it back to the hunter, they pick it up with their mouth. They have to hold it so that they don't drop the bird on the run back to the hunter, but they can't crush it like they're eating it. So you have to use your inner thighs like the bird dog where you're gently hugging and so that you don't drop. But if you use your glutes and your quads, you're going to crush it. See what that feels like. Let the weight go into your big toe and let it sink down and hug. And you'll feel this like light fire of your inner thighs. And then a little different now that you're getting tired, toes a little wider than your heels, like it's kind of business as usual. And then just squeeze more on the baby toe side of your foot. You can feel the crushing squeeze. It's different. Come on down. It kind of hurts your lower back, knees side to side. Let's do another bridge. Press your feet down and come up. So now we know what we're looking for. Just as even taking her block between her knees, not to give it a crushing squeeze. You could put your block between your knees as you're taking this. See if you don't wedge it up like so high that it has nothing to do but stay there, but maybe just above your knees or even just below your knees. See if you can hug the block so it is almost about to fall, but it doesn't fall. Yeah, just that gentle, sure grip that's not crushing. Come on down. Did any of you feel that? Cre create the bird dog, the mouth of the bird dog. Okay, third one. Set it up and let's go. Feet sink down and give the really gentle hug in. Just super gentle there. I'm going to make it so it's barely there. Feet sink down and hug in. One more breath. Come on out of it. You can take your knees from side to side. Okay, remove the block. We're taking um, another bridge pose. You could take your block and sit it on the inside just of your right foot, just so your right foot has something to kind of like work against, your arch against it. So it won't be a lot of information. Uh, your right foot. <laughs> okay, press down and come on up. See if you can feel the whole of your inner arch touching your block, your inside ankle touching your block. 
Hug your left knee into your chest. Keep hugging your block. And just keep it a bent knee. Keep hugging your block. And feel as though there's something that you can hug against as well with your lifted knee. Good. Some of you that have been doing this for a while, I can see you're really getting a new skill here. Foot down, come down. How about feel? Ton of work. Bridges, no, like throwaway pose. Let's do the next one. We're only going to do one wheel after this one. So switch your block to the left foot. Press down and come on up. So just looking for something to hug your standing foot arch against. You can open this foot a little wider. Hug into it. Now bring your right knee into your chest. Now keep feeling that block with your, your standing foot. Yes. Yep. Hugging in. Is that there's some center line that your lifting leg can hug in? A little more lift. So I'm not going to push you away. I want you to come into me. little here. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Feeling it differently. Come on down. Supta body, uh, no, not yet. Supta body kanasana. Knees side to side. <clears throat> One last back bend here. You can take the bridge or we're going to put in all the skills and take the wheel. Set your feet wide on your mat, as wide as your mat. Come up into a bridge with wide feet. Set your hands wide, as wide as your mat. Press down, rise up, or still work with the bridge. It's up to you. Now, once you get into it, hands sink down into the sand, feet sink down, and hug in. Hug in to the imaginary center line. Hug in. Keep hugging in. Feet sink down. Keep hugging in. Hug into the blocks. Imagine them there. Hug in. Keep hugging. Hug. Come on down. Supta Baddha Konasana. You guys have worked incredibly well today. Soles of the feet together, knees wide. Let Feel the stretch. Get some length from what you've been working. Working like this is going to totally transform your body. Hug your knees into your chest. You're like, we'll take some of that. Dead bug pose. What are you feeling, Jess? Lots of belly working. Rock from side to side. Hug your knees into your chest. And you're going to make tabletop. Do this. Let's see which one we want here. Yeah. Do we want opposite? No, I want same side. So straight, like straighten your left arm and return. Right side. Your job is to keep that whole side of your body on the ground. Now, if you need to put your head down, that's okay too. See if you can stretch long without your back arching off the floor. When it is arching off the floor, you've reached the end range of your psoas. You don't have to take your arm as far behind your head then or take your leg as close to the floor when you straighten it. Reality is it probably will be at a pretty decent angle. Finish feeling it out and hug your knees into your chest and rest. Do you discover something there? Could you actually feel how you get to the tight end range and you want a little arching in your ribs or arching in your lower body? Okay, hug your block between the arches of your feet. So right between the arches, the same inner line where we're looking to just feel the whole inseam of the arch against the block. A gentle, like you're giving it the bird dog hug. And then curl up so you want to get rounded so your whole lower back is on the ground and your ribs are lifting up. Now, you may just stay holding this because it's kind of a lot. You could even put your fingertips behind your thighs if you're getting the hang of this. Some of you are ready for a little more. You might lower a heel and bring it up, a heel and bring it up. It doesn't even have to totally touch. As soon as lowering it makes you rock your tailbone and lift your lower back, you've gone too far. We want to keep both sides of your lower back anchored the whole time, side to side or two at a time. So it's not bending and straightening your knees. It's tilting the whole of your leg at the hip and bringing them up and in. So it's, it tilts, but don't tilt your pelvis, and in. Tilts and in. Tilts and in. Tilts, keep this, and in. Don't have to lower it much, and in. Okay, relax, hug your knees. That's harder than we think, isn't it? You can rock head to tail and come through to downward dog. And let's see, let's go to, let's do this for the hip stretch today because I think you need it. Put your hands together, step your right foot outside of your right hand and drop your back knee to the ground. 
put your two hands on your thigh and lift your belly and stretch. All of the front bottom psoas will stretch for you. Top, not an issue. Good. Just breathe here. One more breath. Then hands to the floor. Turn your toes out and drop your knee out. You can put your forearm on a block or the floor or stay on your hand. And right hand to your mid thigh. Wrap your thigh bone out and turn your head to the ceiling. This whole inseam we've been working gets to have a stretch here. One more breath, come back up into the lunge. So back knee down, front foot forward. And let's see if we can have this. If you can, this is gonna be hard for me to show you without any padding under my knee. Your left hand can grab your left foot. Ooh. Tilt forward. You wanna keep the active foot to hold your balance and then reach with your right arm. You can pinch your middle finger and your thumb together. Yes, so see how you kinda of wanna like hang down to the left with your belly? Keep lifting that, you'll get all the stretch. I know that's a tricky one, be careful, Charlie. What you can also do is just take a strap over your shoulder, you see Jody setting this up. You can hold back with your hand or for stability, your hand can hold here or it can just come here if your strap is long enough. You can just leave the foot on the floor too if you're just feeling like it's instable and the jiggling around's not gonna do much for you. Pit of the belly up, oh, yeah, a little more because you're getting your squeeze back now. Yes, that's just a weak spot. It's actually really good. Squeeze here. Yes, feel how it's making you rise? Good, let's switch sides. Hands together, downward dog. Left foot outside of the left hand. Two hands to your front thigh. You do a, a forward lean in the lunge and just lift. You get all the stretch down the right front body. Now what Ali has discovered for herself is she's a lot of flexibility and then not as much strength in the deep core. So she tends to sink a lot. A lot of, especially women do that. So she might need to just add a little pressure against her inner thigh to keep the squeeze and the scissors closing quality of her thighs. Belly lifting for everyone. Hands to the floor then. Turn your toes out to about 10 o'clock. Peel the arch of your foot off the floor and drop your knee out. That's it. If you can come forward, Erin, you'll find the floor that way. Yeah. Yep, that's it, Charlie and Sue. This is the best for you, right, Ellie? Because this is like exaggerating what's easy for you. You could even press up into my palm here, there, and it'll keep developing for you. All right, come on up, hands on your thigh, left hand to reach back for your left ankle. So just keep the hug in of the front thigh, a little bit more, yeah. How's that feel? Great, <laughs> love it, can't wait for more. <laughs> okay, hands to the floor, downward facing dog. Stretch back. Come through, sit down, roll onto your back, two legs straight up in the air. You all have blocks, let's take a long block under the back of your pelvis and let's take waterfall pose. You have a strap, you could strap it around your thighs if it buckles and hold, because that'll help you just let the inner thighs be at relief while this is held together and you just let your thigh bones sink. So straight legs, soft legs, you find it for yourself. We have been working a lot through the class with some musculature that should allow for your lower back to be more released than it otherwise would be. And right now we're adding a final um, ask for relief by letting the weight of the legs just sink down into the back of the pelvis in this waterfall pose. You can take a couple of sighs. 
So it's not a situation of the back arching and it's not a situation of the tail tucking here. We're restoring all the work we've done to just neutral. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice track. There you go, Charlie. Good. Now you might feel your lowest abdominal muscles. We've been using them, but even here, they're just on, on light work, keeping stability. Jess has got some tiny little leg circles going on, both feet heading in each the same direction rather than like a scooping like swimmer circling. It's just both legs kind of making a little tiny, tiny circle. You'll be able to move around your SI joint that way. It's just a spot in your back where the dimples are on some people. All right, bring your knees into your chest and settle in there for a second. Then feet on the floor, you can remove the block. And when you come out of this, lengthen each bit of your spine until you bring your long open pelvis to the ground. You might even hug your knees one more time once you get your whole back on the ground. Drop your knees to the left and look to the right. Let there be easiness in your back. You can switch sides. Your body knows something new now. It doesn't matter if your mind knows it. It'll look for and crave coming to the pathways you've been creating today. Come to the center, hug your knees into your chest and even bring your forehead to your knees. So even the skin on your back body releases and then relax your head and feet down without changing anything about your pelvis. Slide your feet out and open them wide for Shavasana. In studio, the cold eye towel is near your mat, head, head side foot, either right or left. Get yourself set up for Shavasana. So this is a place where the entire practice has this chance to settle into your body. Like the deep learned knowledge, the experiential knowledge has a chance to leave its imprint. Let your body do that work. What you could be is just present and breathing. You'll sense sensations in your body. You'll become aware of thoughts and emotions coming up. And though sometimes those all feel so close as to be what we would call me or myself or I, know that even when they're that close, if they feel like they are what you are, they're just something that's close, not stuck on you. You could rest here and be, and things could pass you by. They could be experienced and then dissolve. just in the practice of being. Is this something to achieve that you're like this all the time, all day long? No. It is something to know the pathway to and have access of. So hold the pose.
Now, still in the space of being whatever level you feel like you've achieved, add some movement, just deepen your breath. Maybe wiggle your fingers and your toes, like feel into the space. And then squeeze your fingers and toes like you're marking this space. This action of squeezing your fingers and your toes any time during the day would be a pathway back to this level of presence. When you're ready, you can hug your knees into your chest. Roll to your side and come up to a sitting position. Sit tall and feel how it is to be in your body right now. And then you could even stretch your arms overhead and bring your fingertips together or your whole palm up to you to create grounding and settling. And let an intention for your day choose you from right here. Something that comes up right here in the space that says to you, this could be an intention today and set it. And then three times we'll chant together. Take a deep breath. Ah. knuckles to the center of your forehead, a chance to touch in, to express gratitude for the incredible body that you have, these incredible people around you who shared an experience. I'm grateful to be here with you as well. Take a breath. Exhale. Namaste. Good work. I hope you enjoyed our class today. I did. I look forward to seeing you again. I'll be here Sunday morning. Otherwise, have a great rest of your Thursday. See you next time.